Good evening and welcome to Winchester News Online. I'm Catherine Hayes. On tonight's news, mass protests over tuition fees, record number of homeless on the streets of Winchester this Christmas, students denied extra parking spaces, and Winchester FC in midweek action. Students in Southampton held a protest test against plans to increase tuition fees yesterday. Thousands turned out to make their voices heard at the city's West Quay. Our reporter, Stuart Appleby, was there. Hundreds of students gathered in Southampton city centre to protest against plans to raise tuition fees by as much as 50%. The event, Town Takeover, which is taking place across the UK, came to Southampton, where students from local southern universities voiced their opinions on the proposed tuition fee hikes. Organised by the National Union of Students, protesters waved banners, placards and handed out leaflets to raise awareness of the controversial government plans. Face masks and static student statues were awash in the city's high street, along with chants by the volunteers against the lack of support they feel they have received from local MPs. As a whole, I think most MPs are getting behind uh, their local institution and that. Uh, with that said, you know, the more people that are aware of the issue and the more people that have a voice about it, uh, hopefully will change the government's uh, perception of tuition fees. A final pose for the cameras echoed the support of the campaign with the debate over higher education funding raging on. Stu Appleby, Winchester News Online. I'm joined now by the Liberal Democrat candidate for Winchester, Martin Todd. Hi, Martin. Um, the students have made their position on university clear, uh, fees really clear. Is anyone listening? Well, it's, uh, certainly I would say that the Democrats are listening. We've been opposed to tuition fees since they were introduced. We're opposed to top-up fees. And we're certainly opposed to um, the increase in tuition fees that's mm -hmm. now being talked about. There was talk of doubling them. Um, there's a review going on at the moment. And um, it's expected that that will follow the, re the recommendation of the universities and allow fees up to twice as high as they are now. Okay. Um, students in Scotland don't pay tuition fees, so why are we having to fight for our rights down here? Well, I suppose that the easy answer to that would be to say that uh, the tuition fees in Scotland were scrapped when the Liberal Democrats were part of the government there, and that's a clear sign of how opposed we are. Uh, and we're not the government here. Uh, it, to be fair to some of the MPs of other parties in Parliament, there was a very big rebellion against the government when they tried to introduce tuition fees, and quite a few Labour MPs and Conservative MPs were opposed to the proposal at the time. Uh, the issue now is that the, the debate has shifted, and it's really all about people wanting to double fees rather than scrapping them, which is what we actually think should happen. Okay. So, ultimately, isn't this going to create a wider gap between the rich and the poor? Well, that's what really bothers me. I mean... Uh, that I'm very concerned that um, people will be put off going into higher education um, because of the fees. And, um, and, and it certainly will not help create greater equality. I mean, one of the problems, I think, with the current system is it was designed at a time when there were lots of jobs available. There were jobs available for people while they were studying and there were jobs for people after they graduated. Mm. That world has changed now. We're now sort of testing the whole system to destruction and we're seeing students graduate with a huge amount of debt and often in a very difficult situation to start paying it off and the interest s starts racking it up and that's really a situation I don't think we should be seeing. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Martin, for coming to speak to us. A man is recovering today after being bitten on the, news and attack, uh, on the nose and attacked near the University of Winchester. The 25-year-old was chased whilst walking home near St James Lane. Police are hunting a white male aged between 16 and 19 with short hair and wearing a pale blue striped jumper. Police are appealing for anyone with information to contact Crime Stoppers on 0800 555 111. Winchester Church's night shelter is bracing itself for its biggest ever festive period as the credit crunch and lack of council housing takes its toll. Madeline Capel went to find out more. The city's night shelter had to turn away 500 people last year. This year, they're expecting the figure to be even higher. I think the numbers certainly are not going down. The recession's on, the council's cutting back on its funding, supporting people are cutting back on their funding to various organisations, so nobody's getting any more money at the moment. We need more affordable housing, everybody knows that, but 
in these economic times, it's not easy. Winchester City Council are working close with organisations that suggest the number of people sleeping rough are going down. I was surprised to hear that they were turning away so many people. It's not for me to dispute those figures, but you know, perhaps they are people that are threatened with homelessness. Perhaps they are living, have temporary living arrangements with like family or friends that they know is going to come to an end quite shortly. There is no reason why people should be, in effect, literally street homeless. Madeline Clipple, Winchester News Online. If you have any other comments on this story or any others on today's programme, then please send us an email to winnow at googlemail.com. Also in the news, rail users in the south will soon be hit by an increase in ticket prices. Southwest Trains and other tra rail companies will raise their off-peak fares. The price changes will take effect in the new year. However, season ticket prices will be lower in, to be in line with the government guidelines and Southwest trains say that on average prices will stay the same. Work has begun to replace the roof on Westgate at the top of Winchester High Street. The medieval monument and pavement around it will be closed to pedestrians whilst the roofing takes place. Building will continue over the Christmas and New Year period and should reopen in February. Students at the University of Winchester received a blow when planning application for extra parking spaces was blocked. Students have begun to park outside homes in Stanmore, causing residents to complain. Veronica Friedel finds out more. The extra spaces for parking were refused when Winchester University applied for temporary planning permission in West Downs area. The decision to expand university in new art studios caused loss of parking spaces and complaints from residents of West Downs and Stanmore. tried having an unofficial car park up at West Downs. The university tried this, but a resident with, unfortunately a resident with a grudge decided to oppose this and the council has had to enforce uh, that we're not allowed to use the car parking spaces up at West Downs. He has appealed against uh, the current park to get more car parking spaces, um, but that's also been refused. It grows year on year. It's to start looking at it, it has outgrown its current site. The non-student residents of Stanmore will always sort of turn around, and when I'm knocking on their door, say, "What are the pro what are the problems you've got here?" They'll say, "Bloody students parking here." You're complaining to me about not having anywhere to park, and these these bloody students, but you're there putting five cars on the street. University as well as local authorities will be still trying to ease the parking problem. The Stanmore issue will be discussed later on this week. Winchester News Online, Veronica Friedel. And now here's Tom Otrebski with the sport. Thanks, Catherine. Well, starting with football in the Sydenham's Wessex Premier, Winchester City extended their unbeaten run to four games with a win against Alton Town last night. Grant Payne has this report. Winchester looked to continue their free game unbeaten run last night at home to Alton Town. It is Alton who started the stronger though, creating the first chance of the game. City coming up with a similar effort near the end of a lacklustre first half. City came storming out in the second half though, and created a succession of openings as they piled the pressure on the away side. Zach Glassball wishing the ground would open up beneath him. Still City came though, and his informed midfielder Danny Cox had rattled the bar, and City were unable to follow it up with anything productive. Then another opening went begging for City as they couldn't break through. The turning point came for the home side after 70 minutes when Ian Davies was pulled down in the area. Penalty to City and there could be no arguments for the Alton players. Danny Cox steadied himself and put the home side into the lead. His delight was clearly shared by his teammates. Late pressure for Alton was in vain as City ran out 1-0 winners. I think it was for all to see it in the second half that we totally dominated that game. You know, we really played some great football. That's pleasing to see. Meanwhile, in the Blue Square South, Eastleigh moved up to ninth place in the table, courtesy of a 1-0 victory over Lewis at the weekend. Well, that's all your sports for now. And now back to Catherine. Thanks, Tom. That's all we've got time for today, but please keep your comments coming in at winnow at googlemail.com. As you can see, all of today's latest stories by visiting our website at www.winnow.co.uk. Thank you and have a good evening.